lay down. Put your thumbs inside your fist and then close the fingers around the thumbs. This is Adi Mudra. Adi is the first mudra. And this is a deeply calming mudra. If everything is just starting to be a little crazy, whether it is the people in your near circle or the distant circle, and you need to take a little bit of time to reconnect with yourself. This is a great mudra to sit with. Not only does it calm the nervous system, but it also begins to open up the top part of the lungs. So it aids in our breathing. And the reason it works on the lungs is because the fascia, the connective tissue from our heart and lungs and the cardio sac that the lungs sit in, the pericardium, all connects. So when we use our hands and our arms, we directly change the tension around how our heart and lungs work. This mudra has a close relative, musti mudra. When you take your thumb on the outside of your fingers, musti mudra, notice how that changed energetically, how you feel around your heart and lungs, and also emotionally. This mudra is related to anger frustration, irritation. And you may have found that everything tensed up a little bit more. So let's go back to Adi Mudra. Tuck the thumbs back in and notice if that changes the sensations around again, the heart and lung. I invite you to close your eyes if that feels safe. This will start with grounding. Letting your body take a comfortable position. A sense of your soft tissue just draping itself gently around your skeleton. So letting go of a whole lot of effort in sitting. Just enough where you can maintain an upright position. And then draw your awareness to your breath, the in-breath, the out-breath. Let the in-breath gently spill into the out-breath and the out-breath empty into the in-breath so that there are no pauses. Invite the breath to deepen so that you feel your abdomen expand as you breathe in. And last week, we practiced Ujjayi breathing. Ujjayi is that gentle restriction of the vocal cords, the glottis, creating a soft hissing sound. When we grow that into a sound, a humming sound, it is Brahma Rimudra, which is simply humming. It sounds like this. Mm. You're not controlling the pitch or the sound. You're not controlling anything, even the leg. It's okay if it's choppy. It's only done on the out breath. So the in breath is silent. We'll start with three rounds. Oh, let me say this too. Your lips are closed, but keep the teeth softly separated so that you're not tense in the jaw, but a sense of a doming of the palate. So let's start with three rounds, taking a deep breath in. Mm. 
Letting your breath just go back to normal. Keep your eyes closed. And sense the Brahmari translates to the female hummingbee, literally raises the vibration in our physical body. We become healthier, stronger, more resilient. The higher the vibration, the healthier we are. Lack of vibration is dis-ease and no vibration, we have departed. The other thing this breath does is, or two other things, it elongates the out-breath, just like the Ujjayi too does when we only do it on the out-breath. So it calms our nervous system. And then third, it quiets the monkey brain. You can't really think of anything as you are humming. We're gonna repeat it one more time. This time, go for about six rounds. And again, don't try to match your rhythm to mine. Just let yours be whatever it is. After you conclude the six rounds, allow yourself to just sit quietly into the sensation after the practice. When you're ready, I invite you to begin. Notice the sensation in your throat, your ears, your shoulders. So this works directly with the throat chakra, our own voice. On the next out breath, you will slowly release the mudra, the hands, and then inhale, open the eyes if you haven't already. And start with our opening stretches. Take the arms out and up, interlace the fingers. Reaching up, draw the ribs away from the hips. And let's bend to the right. Inhaling up to the left. Back up again. Twist to the right. Inhale, draw the arms up, and exhale, let's go to the left. Inhaling up, and release the arms down. Let's take the legs out in front, and shake them up. So Brahmari breath is good for anxiety because it calms that chatty mind. And let's come on to all fours. Now have a couple of blocks at the top of your mat. You're not going to need them right this very moment, but in a wee bit, as we begin to greet the sun that is returning this weekend, winter solstice, a sacred time of the year for Vikings. Let's draw the hips back, puppy pose. And then inhale, drawing up through modified plank, flip the feet, tops of the feet comes down, lift the heart as the hips goes down. Our high cobra, exhaling back, 
Puppy again. Go back and forth in an easy way. As you draw back and exhale, keep your hands well planted so that you get a little spinal traction. And the traction part is the one that we often, often miss out on. And the next time you go back to puppy, staying in puppy, hips draws back, hands reaches forward, spreading the shoulder blades. And then walk the hands to the right side of the mat. Walking the hands to the right side of the mat so that your left hand is at the edge of the right side of the mat. The right hand has walked off, so the hands are still shoulder width apart. Flipping it, your left hand onto the pinky side or the back of the hand if that's comfortable. And then slide your right hand straight down so the wrist is under the elbow. Elbow is now bent at a 90 degree, so the right arm is back, left arm is straight. And just let your head rest on your left upper arm. There's a little ledge there for it. The head can just lift and turn your gaze to the right. I think we are ready to get going here. Inhale, lengthen out through the left fingers and exhale. Gently press into your right hand to invite a little deeper twist so that your left arm is now drawing under, left shoulder is drawing a little bit deeper under. Inhale, soften back towards center a little bit. And exhale, move back into the twist. Pressing on the right hand to twist. And we'll release back to neutral. One more time, stretch a reach into the left hand and deepen the twist. And we come back to neutral, reach the right arm forward. And we meander to the other side. Right hand is now at the left edge of the mat, left side, and the right arm is off the mat. Sorry, left arm is off the mat. Slide the hand down. Elbow is 90 degrees, and the wrist is right under the elbow. And again, just let your head rest. Your right ear is on your right arm. I think we're ready. Inhale. Oh, flip the hand. There you go. There was something. Pinky side of the right hand or the back of the hand. Inhale, we lengthen through the fingers. Exhale, twist. Letting your right shoulder move closer to the ground. And release back towards neutral. Lengthening again, exhale, twisting. And we return back towards neutral. So we go one more time. Lengthen, right hip draws back. So reach out through the palm of the fingers and then we deepen the twist. We get the last. Lengthen all the way up. Take your left arm forward. Walk back to center. And inhale, back up to modified plank to downward facing dog. And here now, first dog. Let's take it for a little walk. Getting a little bit of length on the back of the calves. And then let's lift up on the tiptoes, lift the hips high and bend the knees. If your spine is rounding with straight legs, bending the knees so that the spine is king, always king in the practice. Let the spine lengthen back out as you hug the shoulders Inward towards one another. Hug the shoulders together. And then the neck releases. One more breath. And then on the in-breath, let's look up. And walk. Step the feet to the top of the mat. Take the hands to the hips. And inhale, press into the heels. To come all the way up. Mountain pose. Let's place our blocks at the top of the mat. If you are having a back day, and 98% of the population at some point will have a back day, doing some salutations with a chair 
is going to be a little gentler because we don't go quite so deep in our hips. So if you're using blocks, I recommend everybody doing tall blocks. Tall blocks. And we are ready to get started from Tadasana. Grounding into the heels, fingertips lengthening towards the mat with the sternum drawing upwards. So the sacrum moves down, but the sternum, the breastbone moves up. Inhale, draw the arms out and up, big sun. And exhale, forward fold, taking the hands either to your blocks or to the chair. Inhaling, half forward fold, looking up. And exhale, lift up the right leg back. And we are going to be taking the knee down. And if you're going, uh-oh, I wish I had a blanket. Just slide it under so you can support your knee as we come into the low lunge. Don't suffer in the pose ever. Now here, let's get a little length of the hamstring. So first, let's lunge the right knee, left knee forward. Lunge the left knee forward. And because it is not weight-bearing, it is allowed to travel past the ankle. And then exhale, slide the hips back for the hamstring event. Hips draws back. Inhaling forward. And exhale back. Easy peasy. It's that little easy twofer. We're getting both the quads when we go forward and the hamstrings when we go back. Do one more cycle back. We go forward. Now release the top of your right foot onto the mat. Press the hands into the blocks of the chair. Lift the heart. Lift the heart. And then press the top of the foot down the right foot. Can you lift the knee a wee bit? Can you lift the right knee up just a wee bit? Gives that old front fascia line. Let's take the knee back down, move the blocks out to the sides, and travel back to downward facing dog. Inhale forward to plank pose. And take the knees down. Again, release the tops of the feet onto the mat. And we'll do the roly-poly the first go around, taking the thighs down, the belly, the heart, and then the forehead. Hands besides the side chest, roll the shoulders up and down the back. Squeeze the shoulder blades together as you inhale the heart up and lift the head to follow up. And we are in cobra pose. Exhale. Back to modify plank, traveling to downward facing dog. Look up on in the inhalation and then draw your right knee towards the chest. Pull the knee in and then travel forward. Step the right foot as far up as you can and help it the rest of the way. Take the left knee down. Take your blocks again, tall blocks or your chair. So what we're looking for here is that we don't come into more flexion of the spine than necessary. Let's go back to our hamstring event, stretch the hips back and forward. Move within the range that is a good place for your body today, ahimsa. Rolling on to the back of your right heel as you go back. You can't see what I'm doing. Draw the right hip back. One more time. And then as you come forward, now release the top of the left foot onto the mat, five toenails on the mat. Lift the heart, lift the heart, let the hips draw down. And again, maybe lift the left knee, lift the left knee. Breathing and take the knee down, tuck the left toes under, and then a little bop with the knee. So lift and tap and propel yourself forward. We're back in forward fold. Inhale, look up, exhale, bend the knee, sweep the arms out and up. 
an easy way to travel all the way up. And we are ready to do the second side. Inhale, sweep the arms out and up. Big circle, big sun. Exhale, fold forward. Inhaling again, half forward fold. And this time, let's step the left leg back first. Take the right knee down. That would be the left knee because the right knee is going to be really, really challenging, isn't it? The left knee comes down to the mat again. Take your left block. Now come down to medium height and place your left hand on the block. And I have Lupa block, so it's right next to my right foot. Take your right hand to the outside of your right knee. Knee presses into hand, hand presses into knee. And remember the two rules for your knee happiness. It is traction over the second toe because your knees are sneaky, they're gonna to wanna to move. And now they're gonna become weight bearing. Don't let them travel forward in front of your ankles. But let's get the twist generated first. Inhaling, lengthen through the crown of the head and exhale, we begin to twist all the belly button up over your right back. Again, watch the knee, watch the knee. Doesn't travel out to the side too. Inhale, lengthen again. And deepen the twist. One more time, lengthen, twist. Now, if available, press your left heel back. High lunge, keep the knee where it is, don't let it travel. And then pretend you have a spare arm. Keep your right hand where it is, but that's gonna be your imaginary arm. And maybe take your third arm up to the sky and reach it over the head. Reach it over the head. Revolved lunge. A variation of revolved side angle pose. One more breath. And take the knee down, take the arms down. We're gonna travel back through downward facing dog. Blocks to the sides. Stretch back. And now I'm facing dog, just toggle your mind between the left and the right side. Can you tell you just did zip on one side? Inhale forward to plank again. Tailbone towards the heels, lower abdomen in and up. And the knees can always come down for modified plank if that's better on your shoulders. For the classical descent, let's start by dropping the knees down. Keep the tush high as you lower the chin and the chest. Elbows are hugging in. And inhale, slither the heart forward. Release the tops of the feet and the forehead. Inhale, roll the shoulders up and down the back. Draw the blades together. Inhale, lift up into cobra again. And exhale, tuck the toes. And we are back in downward facing dog. It's that easy. Look up as you inhale. Take your left knee to the chest and then carry it forward. Place the foot down and help it all the way up. Take the right knee down and we sit up again. Block to the inside of the left foot for the right hand. And you want the block high enough where you're not rounding the back. So again, extension and traction. Those are our friends. Forward folding, we have to be careful. Left knee, outer left, sorry, left hand, outer left knee. Creating a bind, press the knee into the hand, hand into the knee. And we begin to twist to the left. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, deeper. Roll the belly button up over the thigh, like the rising sun. One more breath. And then, and this is a big maybe, you may choose to stay down, but to come into the high lunge, press back through the heel, press back through the heel, but keeping the hips low, keeping the hips low, back leg is firing up. Watch that front knee, watch the front knee 
Keep the big toe mount, the left big toe mount firmly down. Now, your third arm reaches out to the side and over, revolving. Left big toe mount presses down, reach back through the right leg, twist, reach, twist. One more breath. And exhale, let's take the hand down, take the knee down, get the blocks back in their proper position. And then give the right knee a little hop forward, forward fold. Bend the knee, lengthen the spine, press into the feet, rising all the way up. And hands together. And down. We're back in mountain pose. It is that easy. Now, one down. Those are all closed hip poses. We want to balance it so we're going to now play a little bit with open hips. It will be warrior two and the side angle. This inhale again, draw the arms out and up. Reach, ribs lifts off the hips. And then exhale, fold forward. Hands to blocks or chair. Inhale, flat back. And exhale, right leg leads back again. As if you were coming into a high lunge. Now spin the back heel down. Hip, sorry, knee lining up to, uh, heel lining up to heel. I got it up. Walk your hands up to your left knee. Walk the hands up to your left knee. So we have a little leaner here. It's a nice place to pause so that we can hug the hips in, compress your pelvis, it sounds weird, but create stability across the hip joints by hugging them together as if you are holding a block between the thighs. Now we'll lead with the right arm, moving it forward. Another big sun up and back. Warrior two stands. Let's draw the left arm under the right for eagle arms. And then as you inhale, let's straighten the left leg. And exhale, bend it again. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, bend. Keep hugging your hips in towards one another. Even as you sink down, you're still hugging towards the midline. Now, staying in warrior two, pull, that's not the right word. Let's start by just relaxing the shoulders down and lift the elbows up. Now, create a sensation of pulling your forearms apart from one another. And then relax the chin down towards the chest. Chin to the chest. Still hugging the hips, still hugging the hips. And breathing. Breathing. On the next in-breath, let's take the arms out for warrior two. Classical. And then utita, reach. Take the left arm way out over. Forearm to the inner knee. Right arm overhead. If that's uncomfortable for your right shoulder, take your hand to the hip or behind the back. So your left forearm is against your inner left knee with the palm facing up, palm facing up. And you just peek down just the knee over the ankle because it's weight bearing now. And does it track over the second toe? Again, these two are really not negotiable. Ground your outer right heel as you extend the right arm as far away from your right heel as you can. And twisting, heart towards the sky, heart towards the sky. Breathing, hugging the hips, so many body parts. And exhale, let's take the hands down. Spin the heels, you can step back again to downward facing dog. Easy breath. 
Now this time, inhale forward to plank. Take the knees down, keep the elbows straight, and then come on to the tops of the feet. Lift the knees into upward facing dog and come back to downward facing dog. Take in your breath here. And then we look up, take the right knee to the chest again, hugging it in. Carry it forward through his very high plankish event and swing the foot forward and then helping it the rest of the way. Spin the back heel down. Hug the hips towards one another. As you again walk the hands up to your right knee this time. Hands on your right knee. This helps get a little bit of time so we can check in with the four corners of each foot. Big toe mount, check. Inner heels, uh-huh. And then tighten the jaw lids on both your feet from inner to outer heel. Zoop. And then reach forward to the pinky toe mounts. Now our feet are where we need them. Is your right knee where it needs to be over the ankle, tracking over the second toe. You say check. We sweep the left arm up and back. And we are in warrior two again. Powerful legs. This time, right arm under the left for eagle arms. Right arm under the left for eagle arms. I'm going to turn all the way around so I can see what y'all doing. Draw the shoulders down. Lift the elbows up. Just peek down at the knee at your knee. Is it where you think it is, the right knee? Not drifting inward, sneak a little boogers. Bow the chin to the chest, chin to the chest. Hug the hips together. And then the back leg, be mindful that you're not hyperextending the back knee. Not hyperextending the back knee, but it's solid. Taking the arms out to the side. Mm. Powerful pose, reach. As far as you can reach, sit down into the right hip, but hold it. Still hugging to the left, forearm to the inner knee, palm facing up, and sweep left arm over the head. Keep the four corners of the feet well anchored. We're using the bind of your right arm, right knee to facilitate the twist in the thoracic spine that this pose gives us. So first let's create space between the ribs and the hips. Reach back through your left heel, reach the fingertips away. And then using your right forearm on the knee to leverage the heart more to the sky. Hug the knees together, hug the knees together, hug the knees together. And exhale, let's spin the hands down through the lunge. Tap the left knee down and up to the front. Inhale, looking up, bend the knees a wee bit, press into the heels, and we all the way up. And let's take the hands, gaze to the heart. Mm -hmm. I say that's going really well. Stand and feel. There's a little heat in this sequence. How are the body parts? Are they all happy? Or some of them are not so happy? I'm getting no thumbs up or down. So we're just gonna continue on. Take your block, place it between your thighs. Now in your mind's eye, you're gonna put an imaginary chair behind you, keyword imaginary. Knees, travel over the second toe. Let's take the arms parallel to the ground. And then exhale, sit down into the imaginary chair. 
and inhale, pressing back up. Let's do that again. Sit back in. Woohoo! She said I almost sat really down there. Sit down. Hover. And then inhale, standing back up. Take the arms down. This is functional movement. Strengthens the legs for getting in and out of chairs. It's a really great movement to do. When you're going to go sit down, do about three or four of these before you sit. Same thing when you get up, do a couple because it focuses on the chair, on the leg strength. So we're going to do one more time. Arms forward, squeeze the block, and sit back as if you were indeed going to sit down. Squeeze the block. Maybe take the arms up a little higher. Reach up. So we are indeed in Utkatasana. Fierce pose. You may have a little shakiness. That's okay. And inhale. Stand all the way up. And release the arms down. I know. So that was one half of the equation. Oh. Both blocks at the top because we're going to need them for the next one. So they've got the strength. Warrior one, let's stand at the top of the mat. A closed hip event. Draw the arms out and up. And exhale, fold forward. Inhale, half forward fold. And then exhale to step the left leg back. Not as far as you did for warrior two. So just a teeny bit shorter. Let's spin the back heel down. This is also not as big as a turn off the heel. Left toes pointing up towards the left top corner of your mat. Bend your right knee. Bend the right knee and then straighten it again. Bending it. And straighten it. Now look at your right knee. Does it track straight forward? Let's keep it in the bend. Right over the ankle, tracking over the second toe. Walk the hands to the knee again. We take out a little pit stop. Midway, assess the situation. Hug the hips inward muscularly produce a vice for the hips. So again, your back foot is turned more forward than out to the side. So if 12 o'clock is at the top of the mat, if your right foot is at 12 o'clock, your left foot is gonna be pointing to 10 o'clock, but not nine, maybe 10, 30, 11 even, but it's definitely not nine o'clock. So because your knee has to negotiate that second toe business as you keep drawing your left hip forward, forward, forward. Let's take the hands to the hips and then lift the front of the pelvis upward, lifting it up. How hard does your left toes has to work to keep that pelvis upright? Now I think we're ready for the arms. Reaching up, interlace the fingers, press the palms to the sky. As you sit down, keep your left hip moving forward. Even as you sit down, maybe a little deeper. Keep the pelvis up and down, not dipping forward. And it takes a little bit of effort on your behalf of your left glute. I know. I know. And release the arms. Take them to the hips. Straighten the front knee. Straighten the front knee. Draw the elbows together. Lift the heart, lift the heart. And hands forward. Hug the hips together, hug the hips together, hug the hips together. Take the hands to your blocks. Front knee is straight-ish. Ish. That's the big ish. Now roll onto the back of your right heel, draw the right hip a little bit further back. And then let the toe mount come down again. Hug the hips together, hug the hips together. 
walk. Sorry, first we're gonna bend the right knee and you're gonna lift the back heel up now. Walk the blocks forward as you bend the right knee and come into this variation of warrior three. Lift the back leg up, lift the back leg. That'd be the left leg, lift, lift, lift. And reach. If you placed yourself a little bit better than I did, you can take your right arm forward for a half-ish version of warrior three. You can also take it out to the side, take it back, hug the hips together, hug the hips together. And then take both hands back down to the blocks as you lower the left leg down. A little forward fold and inhale, half forward fold. Move the blocks back beside the feet as you now step the other leg back. That was smooth, wasn't it? That'd be the right leg goes back. So as you step the right leg back, again, not as long as you would for lunge, spin the heel down. This time your toes may be pointing to 1.30ish o'clock, but not three o'clock. Just enough that you can get the outer heel down, tighten that jaw lid to the outer heel. Bend the front knee, the left knee, and straighten it again. Does your pelvis travel totally parallel to the front edge of your mat? Or are they a little bit more at an angle? So keep inviting your right hip to travel forward as you bend the left knee. Now let's keep the knee bent, left knee bent, walk the hands up to the left knee. Draw the right hip forward again, got it. Take the hands to the hips again, so we're a little bit tilted forward. Now you gotta lift the front hip points up, up, and that is what brings the torso upright. So front knee is bent, tracking over the second toe. Notice how hard your right glute has to work to negotiate. If I let that go, I just pop right into anterior tilt. My whole front hip collapses. I go, nay, nay, nay. And that gets my quad extension a little bit more interesting. Let's take the arms up. This time interlace the fingers with the other thumb in front. Draw the palms to the sky. Lift the front hip points, lift the front hip points, lift the outer corners of your mouth and lift the hands high. Woo. It is good to be here. Thank you. Steady breath, steady pose. One more breath, keep the hip points high, 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 high. And then let's straighten the front knee, take the hands to the hips. Again, lift the hip points up as you draw the elbows back. Firm up the back leg, it's a filler. Ground it, not going anywhere. As you exhale, forward, forward fold. Parsvo Tanasana, forward fold to the side. Take your hands to the blocks again. Rolling onto the back of the heel, that will help the right hip to come forward again. Stretch the bottom of the toe forward. Keep the right hip forward and hug the hips together. Hug the hips together. Hug. I know. Which now gets us ready for our itty bitty little warrior three. By coming forward, bend the front knee, the left knee, move your blocks forward, and lift the right leg. Check your toes pointing straight down. And then the left big toe mount is down, inner heel, outer heel, and the left pinky toe. Now you can take your left arm forward or out to the side, which is all I got room for here. Lifting, breathing, negotiating. 
And take the hand down to the block, foot comes down. Separate your feet about a little bit wider than hip width apart. Inhale, look up. Flat back. And then exhale, belly button draws towards the thighs. First, as only as far as it will go, head goes last. Uttanasana. With each in breath, the sits bones lift a little higher because we are contracting the quadricep and hugging the knees in. With each out breath, the head hangs a little bit lower. But keep a sense of length in the spine, not rounding the upper back. The spine stays long. And inhale. Now we get a flat back all the way up. Bring the feet back together. Take the hands to the hips and inhale all the way up. Uh-huh. Now, for the knee thing. Natarashana is a really good pose for the quadricep. Is if it's got little pins, it's nice to have a wall or a chair or something so that you have some balance support. If you know your balance is a little interesting, just walk to a wall. Standing in mountain pose. And then that we're gonna bend the right knee up and catch it. So dancer pose, so the pre-dancer pose. Now draw the tailbone down. You can also catch your foot with a strap, or you can let it come to rest on a chair, seat, or back if this is really challenging. As you draw the tailbone down, lift the front hip points, lift the front hip point, and maybe take the knee back a wee bit. We can take the left arm to the sky. Take the left arm to the sky. Keep the knees traveling side by side, side by side. Last week we did the frog pose. Very similar event for this pose. Getting the quads lengthened out again. And let's slowly release back down. So this, in a, this pose is not quite the answer. Sometimes called stork pose. Now stand and feel. So the main quadricep crosses from the hips to below the knee. And that's the one that lays straight up. The other ones, they kind of hang out on the inside and the outside, but if there is pain right around the knee, I'm gonna go say, oh, I think we need to look at the big one. Now let's do the other side, four corners of the right foot, and then catch. Catch your left ankle. Once caught, draw the knee towards center line. Draw the knee towards center line. And here you can hold the top of the foot because that's the same fascia line. As you draw the tailbone down, hip points up, tailbone down, hip points up. And then maybe Take your right arm to the sky and maybe take your left knee behind. So it's kind of like a bow pose, standing one-legged bow pose. So we get the balance aspects of it, looking fantastic. One more breath and we are back where we started. Tadasana, mountain pose. Take your blocks and place them in front of the long side of the mat. Prasarda Padotanasana. Take the hands to the hips and step your feet very wide apart. Very wide apart. Now both feet are pointing straight forward. Straight forward. Even keep the heels a little bit out to the side so they're further apart than the feet. Now bend the knees, is that very fat horse? 
You're gonna lift the knees, but hug the hips in. Hug the hips in towards one another. Lift the heart, draw the elbows back. Draw the elbows back. Lead with the heart. So the knees are bent, and then hip hinge, lead with the heart as you draw forward into the forward fold. Position two. Here, take your hands to the blocks or the floor if you can maintain a straight spine. That's the key. You still want to feel a little bit of spinal extension, that you have a little bit of back bend in the upper back. So arms are right under the shoulders. Slide your left hand under the face, or straight under your face. Take the right hand to your hips. Lengthen through the crown of the head and then press into the left hand to twist to the right. Like let your left knee bend as you twist. Now exhale, drive the left heel into the floor or stay in the twist. I know, take a breath in. And exhale, bend the left knee again, twist a little further if it's available. Use your muscles. And then exhale, drive the left heel into the floor. Now here, we can take the right arm to the sky or keep it on the hip. Hug the hips in, hug the hips in, hug the hips in. So this is mainly a thoracic twist. It is an upper back twist. Keep the pelvis neutral. Boom. One more breath. And exhale, place your right hand where the left hand is. Left hand to the hip. Reach through the crown of the head. And then exhale, bend your right knee and twist to the left. As you exhale, press into the right heel to straighten the leg. We get a little bit more thoracic twist. Be kind, be mindful here. And again, inhaling, twist a little bit further, bend your right knee again. And then exhale, press, take that right heel, but stay as best as you can in the twist. Last go about it. Bending, twisting, driving it strong. Take your right arm maybe to the sky. Left arm, left arm, left arm. Sorry. Keep the pelvis neutral, hugging together. Press down through your right hand to facilitate the lift. Up, 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 up. Oh! And exhale, come all the way down. Now, walk the hands forward either on the blocks or the floor for wide legged downward facing dog. As you lengthen forward, keep the hips, they're still hugging in, and then pull them back so they are over the ankles but the hands extends forward. So we again, retraction of the spine, tractioning the spine. Pull the legs back, pull the legs back. Walk the hands back under the shoulders and then toe heel, toe heel in. So that maybe just slightly wider than the hips, take the hands to the hips and press all the way up. Step the feet together. Mountain pose. Fingertips lengthening down. Heels grounding. And then we're ready to come onto our back. So let's come all the way down. We can't finish without the pretty carny. Our bestest of immune system poses. Come onto your back, knees are bent up, lift the hips and let your sacrum come onto a block. Arms are down alongside the hips, feet are hip width apart, heels under the knees. So I'm just on the low height right now. 
I'm not going for a, a lot of big stuff. We're gonna go through bridge pose first. So inhale, press the feet down, squeeze the butt, squeeze the butt, then press up into bridge. Remember, we gotta get the glutes to fire before the hamstrings does the job. Then release down. And let's do that again. Press the feet down, squeeze the buns, lift up. Watch the knees don't splay apart, that they stay with the big toe mounts well rounded. Lower down. Now lift up again, glutes first. Maybe take the block up a smidgen higher or stack two blocks on top of each other. If your foam blocks are very soft, then just stack two instead or stay exactly where you were. You can stay in this place or for the pretty karate, karate take your right knee in as far as you can, but keep the tailbone aiming towards the floor, take the left leg in, so you're not completely airborne, but you're in a back bend. Straighten one leg at a time. Reaching up through the heels, reaching up through the toe mount. As if you're trying to kiss the ceiling with your feet, keeping the heart lifted. And the breath steady. With all the muscular work, the contractions, releases, contraction, releases, we have pumps, the lymph fluid around our body. So when we do physical work, we up the speed that the lymph travels through the system. And we're able to pick up more foreign invaders. I'm not gonna mention anything scary. So that is one of the reasons that stagnation equals dis-ease. The other way to move lymph is with gravity as we are right now. So that's why the inversions are so important for the practice, for a complete practice. It doesn't have to be the big and scary inversions like handstands, that was last week. Um, it can be this, where the belly is above the heart. And now let's bend the knees. Pull one knee towards the chest as you very slowly lower the other ones down so you're not jarring across the hips of the pelvis. Press into the floor foot so that you can release the other one with control. And let's do our squeeze and release. Squeeze the buns as you inhale and relax. Let's do it again. Press the feet down, squeeze the buns. And release three more times, three more times, then take the block out. And then once you come down onto your back, pause here just for a breath or two. Pause for a breath or two. And if your low back is begging for a release, do draw the knees in. That will lengthen out the lumbar spine. Otherwise, simply straightening the legs out for Shavasana. If that creates a catch in your low back, use your blankets or blocks to elevate the knees. That will release the psoas from the pull on the lumbar spine. Relax the arms to the sides, palms facing up. And just assess, are you comfortable? Are you comfortable? 
You may want to slide a blanket under the head. You can also place a blanket across the belly. That is incredibly grounding, especially after practice like we have today with a lot of movement. Now tuck your thumbs inside your palms again, Adi Mudra. And then silently do robbery pranayama. And then let go of the mudra, let go of any effort, any effort. And all effort vanish. And then gently deepen your breath, signaling to your body. And we are transferring, we are transitioning. Bend up the knees in an unhurried and easy way. Rock the knees from side to side. Then roll all the way over to the right or left side. As you come to rest on your side, pause. Pause for several breaths. And then use your arms and hands. Press the palm into the floor. Press the forearm into the floor to facilitate your rising up. So again, you're not using the back muscles as much or the jaw for that matter. Let's bring our palms together at our center. Closing with the mantra for peace. Om Shanti 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 Om. Please join me. Take a deep breath in. Om Shanti 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 Om. Exhale and bow your head towards your heart, the servant to the master. And may there be peace in your heart space. May there be peace in your life. And may there be peace in the world that we share. May it be so. Inhale, let's draw the gaze back up. Namaste. Thank you.